Now, AI agents are everywhere, they're all the rage, and you want to use it on your own data. Well, I'm going to show you just how simple it is here today on Databricks. We're going to create a customer support AI agent where you can ask it natural language questions, and it can use SQL queries that you've pre-written or your data engineer has written, and it can leverage that to actually find the information you want and even send emails. So let's look at a quick example before we get into the tutorial. So we have here, what did Thomas Haas last view? Give me the details. Shout out to Thomas Haas. And so it goes and it looks up and leverages the tools that we've given it to go and find Thomas in the customer table and then find what he viewed last and cross-reference that with our products table. And it gives us more information here. And then you can ask, send him an email with this and any related products. And it will go away and it will find related products based on the vector search that you've given it. And it goes away and it finds this here. And then it drafts up this email where it says, you should look at the Everfit Performance T-shirt, but you might also be interested in running shoes and a smartwatch. Amazing. And even on top of that, it then gives me more suggested questions. So stuff that could take you hours to figure out, it can now do it in seconds. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing I want to do is come to databricks.com and here you want to click on try Databricks. Now for here, just go with Express Setup and you can just continue here, sign in with your Google or your Microsoft and then you can get some free credits. And so here I am inside of Databricks in my workspace. You will get credits. I've got $40 worth of credits. And as you see, just playing around with this agent, I've used about $12 worth of credits in total. Um, and I've done a bunch of stuff, including vector indexing, etc., and using Claude 3.7. In any case, you want to give your card details, I think, so that you can actually get access to using Claude, because originally I didn't have access, but now I do. You can also get Claude 4 in here as well, which is pretty cool. First things first as well, before we go deeper into this, is you do have to set up vector search. If it doesn't appear, then the way to find it is if we go to compute, and then we go to here, you can see vector search. Now, if you don't have vector search, you may have to run through these commands, but it's very simple. Now we're in Databricks. We'll go to machine learning down here and go to playground. And as you can see, we already have Sonnet 4. Now, if we click in here, we can see all of the models we have access to. And these ones here, if we see that tools enabled, that's this little purple icon, meaning we can use 3.7 Sonnet with tools, turning it into an agent. Whereas Sonnet 4, it's just a chatbot. It's not an agent. And then it also tells you how much it costs as well. We're going to be using 3.7 so on it we'll click use endpoint and so here this is just the playground kind of like a playground for like open ai or something and you can see there's a bunch of text here but actually it's kind of useful so it says that you can prototype an agent so you can add a pre-built tool from the catalog so for example you can execute python code from the agent just directly in here like literally that's it you can just do it straight away. You can add your own tools, which is what we'll be doing today, using this here, adding our own tools, and then you can start from example, etc, etc. So you can even add a system prompt here as well. So we'll just type something like, hi, who are you? You can see that that's us interacting now with Claude 3.7 Sonnet. Um, and then you have this AI judge as well to tell you if it's safe or relevant question, and then some suggested follow-up questions, which can be really handy like in today's tutorial. Let's turn this into an agent by giving it tools. So if we go, if I actually click add tool, you'll be able to see them here. So if we drop down, we have a couple of different tools here and these all come from our Unity catalog. You can also give it some function definitions straight like this. And you can also add search indexes like this as well. So first things first is that we want to get the data. So the original tutorials that I was following to learn how to do this, they don't show you how to set up the data which is a nightmare. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. When I first started trying to learn Databricks, I was completely stuck. Try to spin up clusters, trying to organize and sort out SQL editors and notebooks. Despite being a cloud engineer with data engineering experience, it was just such a learning curve, which I wasted hours, if not weeks, trying to figure stuff out. And that's why I recommend DataCamp's introduction to Databricks. It's built for beginners, but it's still hands-on and practical. For example, here, you can create your first cluster all within their virtual environment, so you don't have to worry about setting it all up locally on your own computer or the costs involved. You also explore catalogs and write SQL queries, all of the things that you've done in this video and are gonna do in this tutorial, you can learn all about them in depth in here, get more experience that way. I used it for the prep for this video, and honestly, I wish I'd start there because I wasted so many hours 
trying to figure out stuff in Databricks, let me tell you. So if you want to master Databricks, you've got to save yourself the headache, go on, check its first link in the description below if you want to get started. Anyway, back to the tutorial. So just for quick reference, the kind of structural layout of Databricks generally is kind of like this. So you have your main cloud account, or in this instance, we're just using Databricks Cloud. And inside here, we have our Unity Metastores. And inside these Metastores, you can have a bunch of workspaces. So we have here, da -da -da, workspace, but this is actually a Metastore. And inside your Metastore, you have workspaces. But the default one, I had called it workspace. But that's by the by. So you have this, workspaces. Then inside here, you have catalogs. Now these are catalogs of things for example, schemas. And inside these schemas, you have then your tables, your views, and your models. So this is the kind of general overview if you're wondering like what is going on here. And so that's why when you're going to use stuff, you can register it with your catalog so that it's then part of that catalog that you can then use. First things first is on the left here and under the SQL editor, you can see in your organization we have agent. Now this agent we have Claude in here, and in this Claude database we have three tables, customer info we have all these fields, then we have products with these fields, and then products VA, oops, VS index, VS meaning vector search, and you can have this here, and then that's what this is, this is the vector. And then you have the functions which you've assigned to this as well. Now this doesn't come by default, which is what I was wondering first in this tutorial, you actually have to create this. So we have this here, this little script, which generated, of course, using ChatGPT to generate this fake data. But we have here, create the catalog, so create catalog if it doesn't exist, called agent, then one called Claude, so now we have Claude inside agent. Then in here, I want to clear these tables, so obviously if this is your first time running it, this will fail, so you just remove that. Then you want to create the customer info table and insert a bunch of data. Then we want to insert the products after we create the products table as well. So we only create those two tables. This third table is the vector search table. So from here, we have a bunch of customers, as you can see, with last viewed item saved. And then under here, we have the, the actual items, so you can see that they match up. So for example, Everfit Performance T-shirt is that same one here. So you'll be able to actually link that across and kind of match them up. The way that the agent's gonna work is it's gonna try and retrieve data, such as this description, based on the last viewed item of a person. That's the way we're gonna interact with it. And the way that it will get all this data is by using the um, vector search. So, to get this vector search table, all you have to do is if we go to compute, then under compute, we'll have vector search here. And then you just click create, Give it a name, give it an endpoint name, so whatever, we'll just call it end, end, <laughs> end point. And then advanced settings here, you can change stuff, and you just click confirm, and that'll create your end point. Now, the next thing you have to do once you get your end point is you actually have to use that end point to create the vector search index. So, to do that, we're gonna go to the catalog, and inside here, we're gonna go agent, Claude, tables, product, or, if you're just on that main page, you can just go directly to it. And from here, you want to um, get the vector search. Now, if you look at old videos of people doing this, you go to the three dots and it's here, but it doesn't exist here. You actually have to go to create and then create vector search index. And from this now, you give it the index a name. So we called it products vs index. Primary key, it's just the ID. Leave this blank. You want to compute embeddings because this is what it's going to use to actually search against the RAG database because it uses numbers to search, the number numerical representation of the data. And then embedding source column, we're going to do this description because that's what we want it to search against because the name is how we're going to match the products to the customer info. But then to get the description, which is what we're going to actually use RAG for, we're going to um, embed the description. Embedding model, whatever one, doesn't really matter here. And then your vector search endpoint, we're going to select whichever the endpoint is. Now here it might pop up with an error saying that you have to enable some table thing. You just copy that um, and then paste it into your SQL editor, run it, and then come back and do this again and it will work. So once you've created that, you will then have your vector search index here. So perfect, we now have all of our tables. We now just have to create the functions to interact, which is one of the... When I was first learning Databricks, I'd always wonder, what is the point in it? Why is it so complicated? 
But then it makes sense because once you understand Databricks, everything is here. So like right now, I have my data stored in here and databases and tables. I have my AI agent just ready here to create, which after we create, we can then even run it as a notebook. So we can actually take it out over the playground. So we have our AI agent ready to go here. Now we have SQL editors to interact with the data, but we can also create functions which we can then give to our agent to then execute, for example, this one here. So um, it's a very powerful platform. All of this code will be in the description below. Go and check the link out. So next thing we want to do is give the functionality to the agent. Now we're gonna give it just a couple of functions just to test it out. We have this create a replace function. So look up customer info and basically it just goes and gets some metadata about customer. Now this comment here, the reason we have this comment particularly uh, in particular is so that the agent can understand when to use this. Because the thing with agents and tools is you have to give your tool a very uh, descriptive description so that the agent understands how to use it. So we can see here that it's return select all of this from here, well that, limit one. So bring back one of them where customer is the input one. So this is a lookup customer info. We then have product description similarity search. So this is where our vector search is gonna be leveraged as you can see here. Now the same kind of thing, it has the comments for the agent and then it selects this from a vector search. So select description as the content, and then you vector search. And for the index, we're gonna use this VS index. We have our query, which is the string from here. And then the number of results we're gonna give back are five. Because for the vector search, it gets chunked up. So we'll go and have a quick look actually at our vector search one. So you can either find the data by running a query, such as right clicking here, then preview a new tab, and it'll pop open like a query like this and select all. But then you'll have to connect this anyway to some sort of cluster. Um, or another way you can do it is actually see it inside of sample data. So you can just start and close. So we can connect our serverless starter warehouse. So they spin up and boom, there you go. You can see it here with all the embeddings, um, the description, the name, and then the ID as well. So an additional one which we've added in here as well is this send email via SES. So this actually, we can either, there's two ways we can do it here, and I'll show you both. You'll have code for both, you can try it out. Number one, you can either do it using something like Mailgun, which is super easy to set up. You literally just make a Mailgun account and then get an API key, and that's you. Or one which is a little bit more complicated, but is more scalable, it's more standard, um, you know, generally, is by using SES, which is um, essentially for Amazon's email sending service. And for this, you'll need an access key, a secret key. Don't hard code them like this. I just hard coded them like this. So I could show you, for example. Um, they can have a sender email. It can have like a nice looking template and stuff, etc. So the first two we have here, the lookup and the similarity search, these would be leveraged for your, say, customer service agent to be able to actually see data without having to go trawling through tables. Because obviously we have a tiny little example here. There's not much data at all. But like you can imagine if you had you know, tens and tens of products, hundreds, thousands of customers, etc., then you'd be able to actually get information so much faster this way. So those two are for that. And then the third one here, email, is like you could then, as say a customer service agent or something, you could then send discounts, for example, to specific people, or you could automate the agent to send emails to people to go and look at the last item they've seen, stuff like that. So to get these added in as functions, you literally just run all, and then it will run these here, and we already have that cluster spun up. So it will run through these here and it will create or replace these functions. And boom, that's it. So now if we go to Playground, and from here, let's go up to Claude. We'll go to Claude 3.7 so we can use tools, use that endpoint. Tools here, we'll add some tools. And now instead of just giving it certain tools, we'll just give it all of the tools. So that's agent.claude.star, so that's all. Click on Add. And now it has access to all of those functions. We can then say add a system prompt. So like you could say, you are a customer service assisting agent. Boom, save that. <clears throat> now you can say something like, let's go have a look at the data first. So in products we have the Dredu Everfit. Go back here, we have someone who has recently viewed this. So 
Thomas Haas. Shout out to Thomas. So if we go back to the playground here, we could say something like, what did Thomas Haas last view? Give me the details. And then it'll go away now, and it'll use the tools that you've given it to go and find this customer, find what he last viewed, then match that to the description and return that, all using the tools which we created here. And there you go, what? So it's thinking through, and bam, there you go. That's that information already. So you can see just how powerful this is. Today we're just making it super simple to show you how this works. You can have your database, you can have your tools which are custom made functions, as well as actually leveraging 3.7 Sonnet or 4, um, all within Databricks here. See, it says I need to look up this, I need to retrieve this based on the info I found, Everfit Performance, and then here's the info about that. Boom. And you could say then something like send an email, which this won't work, but you could then say like send him an email with this and any related products. Then it'll go away and it'll match that against the products and it'll look through the vector search, it'll try to match everything, etc, etc as you can see here. And as I said, you don't have to just run this in the playground now. What we can do is we can click on get code, we can now apply this on data, or we can create an agent notebook. And now this agent notebook doesn't just have to live here, we can then take it out of here again, or we can serve it as a specific endpoint. And I mean, look at all this that it's written up. So all of this code has been abstracted away from us, and it has created this entire document on, on how to create this tool call an agent. And that's how you create a customer support AI agent in Databricks. Now, if you're ready to master Databricks and you want to actually learn how to use the UI, you want to learn how to actually leverage workspaces and catalogs and understand the fundamentals, as well as get a real understanding of SQL so you can build your own AI agents just like this, you want to check out Introduction to Databricks. It will be the first link in the description below. I personally used it to try and help me when I was trying to learn Databricks at first, and honestly, it has saved me weeks of effort. So, check it out, first link in the description below, and thanks for watching. See you later.